Hello, my name is Ton Kramer, and I will be going through installation of uh, odometry on a stock Exceed magnet, as we saw there. Now, what we're going to be installing is this board that we ordered from China that it has a little Hall effect sensor on the right there, and it will output a digital signal that our Raspberry Pi can read. So here we're going to take a look. Uh, we're going to install it down here on this main gear on the drive shaft. Our drive shaft is conveniently <clears throat> exposed and has some uh, nice circular holes there that are already pre-drilled. What we're going to do is put some magnets in there and, uh, and then we'll put our Hall effect sensor. So I'm uh, showing you here the screws that you'll need to do take off those three by the gear. And uh, you don't actually have to do that one that I'm pointing there. That is just to hold the antenna. You can if you want to. And then these three additional screws there, you'll want to take those out. Now, as you take this uh, top plate off, you'll just want to be a little careful. There is this small little piece here that might be easy to lose. Now we're looking at the drive shaft after we've taken that top plate off. And that's approximately where we're going to be putting our board. But first we need to take the motor mount off and there's these three screws here. You want to take those three out. And then that pops off very easily, the motor. Now you'll want to get a very small Allen to um, loosen this, call it. <clears throat> now Doug's going to help uh, show how we're going to take the drive shaft. You have to actually flex the body a little bit and then that will just come right out. And then there's this little call it that just pops off and then this gear just comes right off and that's where we'll be putting the magnets. You can see there's a pin. You, you want to make sure that little pin uh, doesn't go anywhere. So next you want to get uh, some kind of a flat service. Um, you know, I chose poorly this, this bubble material uh, was to protect the table. Honestly, uh, we'll show you later that uh, a static free bag turned out to be better. And what I'm doing now is I'm pointing out if you have a sombrero, you just need to find uh, some place that you're going to get 3.3 volts and ground. And that 100 pin is, is going to be our, uh, our signal where we're going to get the odometry. You saw, saw some, uh, what we're doing now is just giving it power and we've got our stack of magnets and we're just testing and you can see on the bottom right there that in one orientation it will trigger and then the other orientation it doesn't so you just need to make sure which one is which and then when you do that you will want to mark your magnets somehow I used a sharpie so these little guys are very powerful and um, you want to set them uh, some distance apart. I didn't set them far enough apart at first. And all that happens is when they stick together, your Sharpie will, will smear off on the other side. And then uh, it will be unclear which side is which if you've got Sharpie on both sides. So I just spread them out, let them dry for a few, uh, few seconds. Okay, now I'm just showing you uh, the back side and, and make sure you get your orientation correct before you put uh, all the magnets in. So here's Doug. Uh, actually we've done a couple of them and we figured out that there's a better technique than our previous run. So I'm, I'm showing you this one because the er our first we tried to do just one magnet at a time and it was it, as uh, this is a metal gear. It was uh, 
pulling to one side. It was difficult to get that straight on. So what we're doing now is we used a whole stack of magnets as we pushed it in and then pulled it off to the side. And that helped us keep the magnet in the orientation all the way into the hole. So we're heating it up. That just gives us a little bit of work time. Uh, we're just using hot glue here. And he, he's putting a little bit, just a dab in there. You don't want to overdo it because um, you don't want to gum up the back side of your gear where it, it will be um, rubbing against the, the housing on the other side. So watch him do a third one here. If you, yeah, so he's just pausing to, to heat it up. That just gives him a little more working time. You can see he's got a stack of magnets. You want to push it in. You don't want to push it in too far. We are using that static free bag. That seemed to um, be enough to give a good finish on the opposite side. Okay, here we're going to see the back side. You can see we overdid it a little bit. There's a couple, there's a little glue that was against that back face. And here's the front face. And uh, Doug was recommending that we go into the gaps here and just try to seal it a little bit more, uh, stabilize these magnets and uh, it'll, it's, I don't know that this is going to prevent, uh, you're still going to get small iron filings probably sticking to this as you, um, as you use it because it is exposed, but this will just help uh, seal it a little bit so that, so that they aren't getting inside. So here I'm just uh, showing the fit and making sure that everything moves well. And you want to get your Hall Effect sensor approximately centered on those magnets as they come around. And now you, you can see I've got it uh, mounted there. Uh, I put some hot glue underneath and uh, quite a bit actually of hot glue and then um, screwed that down so you want to drill pre-drill the hole and then take a fine screw and then uh, I'm just making sure as I turn that that uh, the lights are lighting and if you have it the wrong distance your your light will actually stay lit I found that it needed to be quite close in order to get the the tripping effect per magnet that we wanted so here I'm just uh, measured out a distance on the floor and um, you just drive your donkey or uh, whatever you're using. And then if you're using donkey, here's a rotary encoder part. You can see the millimeters per tick. I arrived at 9.5, but what you'll want to do is just turn the debug to true on the end there and um, continue testing until uh, as you run it will spit out the, uh, the, the distance that it's predicted. And once you're getting uh, predictable values there, um, you should be good to go. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, best place to reach us is on Slack at uh, donkeycar.com, or you can go to Slack and the Slack address is what? donkeycar.slack.com. Thank you.